Hi, everybody. Um, I am Meredith, and if you can bear with me for one second, I'm actually going to turn my camera on. So let's see if we can get this going. Yes. Okay. So I don't know if you're seeing me twice. Rebecca, you can chime in. I don't know if we did this part yet. Um, but I, I wanted to show my camera uh, or use the camera today and show my face because so many of us are are doing this now more routinely. Um, and the Amaris team doesn't have the chance to go out into the world and, and talk to our customers and our users. And um, that's where a lot of the uh, really nice engagements and conversations happen. And so um, we're, we're switching over to doing these webinars as well as some other activities. And I think it's just nice to see our faces and we hope to see your faces again soon as well. Um, and really, first off, I want to thank everyone for coming. It's an interesting time. Um, and I know that even though some people may say we all have tons of free time now that we're working from home, I know that's not really the case for many of us. Um, you may hear my four-year-old in the background at some point during this meeting. Uh, apologies for that in advance. But um, Yes, we don't have all the time in the world now, and I really want to thank everyone for taking the time um, to spend their precious time with us. So we do appreciate that. Um, today, uh, I'm presenting what is the first in a very long series of webinars. Um, not so long that uh, uh, not so long that you won't uh, enjoy it, but um, we're going to do one a week or one every two weeks for a few months and we've got about 17 different webinars that we are planning to do. We've put out the first five um, for you to register and sign up for, but um, there will be more and we'll, um, if you, uh, we'll get you um, an email and announcement about the rest of those for you to register for those. And I'll give you some more information about that. Um, so, Today, my, my webinar is really going to answer the question, how do I get my images into Amaris and how do I visualize them? So a very simple question. I'm going to break it down into uh, a few parts and I hope to not take the whole hour to be able to, um, to do that and then we'll um, be able to have some time to uh, answer questions. Um, so that's my webinar, but what about those future webinars? You've seen the additional four they're covering. Um, Anna is going to cover uh, ad, uh, more advanced visualization techniques. Um, we're gonna have Alexei cover Amara Stitcher. Dieter's going to talk about a really cool way of doing something that our team has called artificial dissection. Um, so that'll be a, a great one as well. So if you haven't signed up for them all, I encourage you to sign up for them. Uh, just even if you can't make it on the on the day, you'll then be able to get an email about the recording. And we will have all of the recordings ready for you um, a few days after each of the webinars so that you can check them out when you have free time. Um, maybe when kids are asleep or um, you're not in a bunch of meetings on Zoom or something like that. OK, so I'm going to switch over. Um, and and uh, start going through my presentation, turn off the webcam. so. I'm, uh, I'm not using the bandwidth too, too much. And uh, yeah. So um, I also wanted to take some time in this first webinar to go over some of the tools and resources we have um, we have online right now for everyone. So if you go to amaris.com, what you'll see is a page um, where the first slider up here uh, talks about let's get virtual. And so this is our hub for where we um, are uh, we are offering various links to all the different tools and resources we have for, um, for you. So once you get to the hub, um, you'll see that there's a page with different blocks. You can request a demo. You can sign up for the webinars. You can also go online to request assistance. You can also um, find a, a direct link off to some of our learning center materials, as well as tutorial videos, which are more bite-sized, um, shorter videos for you. So there's a variety of things on there. Um, we'll be adding some more to it in, um, in the next couple of days as well. So definitely check 
um, that plays out to learn more about Amaris besides just um, following along with the webinar series. Okay, so then today in my webinar, what I'm going to be going over is, is really two of the views within Amaris. Um, and, oh, sorry, two of the views within Amaris. And so um, the first one is the arena view, and that's going to um, going to be focusing on how to import files and to do what we call, which is uh, observing your folders and and uh, allowing you to to open up images and, and then to be able to visualize them within the surpass view of Amaris. I will also be going over Amaris file converter. So. Amaris File Converter is a free software that can be put on any, um, any computer, Mac uh, or PC, and allows you to convert files from various file formats into Amaris files. So I'll go into that a little bit more as well. So those are the things I'm going to cover. And now um, that's the end of the PowerPoint presentation, except for a, a thank you slide at the end. And really what I want to talk about um, uh, it, or really what I want to do is show you Amaris. So, now I'm going to switch over, so you're going to see probably a dirty desktop in the, in the background. Oops, that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to start up Amaris. We, you can see it down here. I am, I have Amaris, Amaris File Converter, and Amaris Viewer installed on this computer. If um, if you don't have an Amaris license, but you still want to use the Amaris rendering engine, I suggest you check out Amaris Viewer. It's a free software. You can also find that um, on our website, and it's in that. Uh, it, there's a link to it on that first page of our website. So when I open up um, Amaris, and if you open it up for the first time, you're going to have a very similar view as to what I have right now. So I am in within the arena view. So that's this big button in the upper left hand corner. And what you're seeing is a folder where we have um, we have supplied as part of the installer a, um, a a group of demo images. So these are images that we uh, think show off nice um, parts of Amaris or nicely show off parts of Amaris. And we have some that are simply 3D images. We have some uh, a 2D time series, 3D time series, other 3D images, and then we have some that have objects within them. So you can tell if um, if an uh, if a file is a 3D file because you have a nice little cube icon there. It's a 2D image over time because it's a square with little slashes after it, and then 3D over time because it has a cube with little slashes after it. So that's Besides just knowing my demo image as well, that's how I can tell um, what kind of images I have. And so Arena is, um, it is really nice for, for organizing your data and showing it like this, um, but this is just our demo data right now. So one of the things I'm going to show you is how to add, and, um, add your own files and be able to look at them within this Arena view. Okay. So to do that, what you would want to do is to go up here to this top bar and you can see that you have the option to observe folders. So right now we are we are by default observing this demo image folder, but I can go in and click observe folder and instead go to uh, yes, this PC and then go to data. So this is just where I keep my data on this D drive and I'm going to select the folder. And now, wow, you see all these folders that are on my D drive. Um, you can see customer names, <laughs> all these various things in here. And over here on the left-hand side, that's where we have this condensed tree for all the folders. And, um, and then I can click on folders over here or also over here and see what's within them. And because you are able to observe your own folders, your own folder structure, and because we've moved away from having a database and instead just are mirroring what's found on your own drives, we are calling this a mic microscopy image browser. So we're really just allowing you to browse through the folders and images that you already have with the added advantage 
that you are seeing thumbnails. So as you can see here, I've gone into one of my folders and I can see thumbnails of each of these images. And so um, that really helps me, because, helps me and I think probably many of you out there because we're so visual, we like imaging, we, you know, um, we like image analysis. We uh, oftentimes can associate uh, images better than names. And it's, so it's incredibly helpful to see these thumbnails. Not only are you seeing thumbnails, but you're also seeing some information. So right now, um, I can look at this file and either in the uh, in the details that are shown um, for each of the thumbnails or when I hover over it, I can see a lot more information about it. And that helps me um, when I'm looking for a particular image or if I just want to know some of um, the details about the file. How many channels does it have? Um, its size, how many time points, that sort of thing. You can also click on them and get that sort of information over here on the right hand side as well. So far, I have been looking at my data sets at a particular Zoom level. And so I've been looking at details, but if you need a bigger uh, a thumbnail and you want, you want to prioritize thumbnail size over the amount of information, you can click on medium or large icons and you can see these much more easily. So don't forget, um, that you have that option down here in the bottom right hand corner and you can um, adjust that and I'll let you guys all um, take that for a for a test drive after you uh, after you watch this. Okay, so I, I want to mention um, one more thing about arena before I move on to actually um, converting your files and that is I you can imagine that within this D drive that I have there's a bunch of, of folders that I don't want to see right now. Either they're not, they don't contain um, image data or it's something like a cache folder, something like that that just isn't, doesn't need to be seen. And so you do have the option within Arena to hide things. So I'm actually going to hide everything but this folder right here. So I'm going to just use shift and click to, to grab all of these folders. And then I'm going to right click and say remove from arena. So this is not deleting the folders, it is just hiding them. And so I'm gonna do, do that and see now they're all hidden, I don't see them. And if you want to see those items that have been hidden or have been removed, then you can go under the arena file or the arena menu and down here it says show removed items. And when they come back, they're just grayed out with an X across them to show um, that they've been hidden. So um, I'll get rid of that again. Okay, so that's there too, and can be super useful when you have lots of folders like I do, and I'm sure many of you do too, because um, yes, lots of experiments going on. Okay, so when we, um, uh, let's see. So when you first get started with Intermaris, most often, unless you're working with a Dragonfly confocal from our Andor colleagues or um, so a couple of other groups that are able to create uh, Amaris files, what you're starting off with instead is not an Amaris file, but something else. So in this case, I have a, an older LSM file from uh, Zeiss microscope. Um, within the Embryo folder, I have a LIF file or a couple of LIF files, and then I also have some TIFF files within this folder. And so I'm going to take you through the three different uh, cases or three different situations um, in terms of what you need to do to convert these files over into Amaris files so that we can then open them within Amaris. And so that is a change that uh, almost uh, exactly a year ago, it was April 9th of 2019, that we introduced in Amaris 9.3. So we do um, require that you uh, convert your files from these raw microscopy file formats over into Amaris files. So that is a requirement. We do that for a good reason though, and that's because when you do open them up, it's much faster. 
And, and so we wanted everyone to have a much better experience um, in that respect. I, we understand that there are some downsides to it. And so we've worked to make those downsides as small as possible. And so when we convert files into Amaris files, you do have the file converter that you can put on any, um, any other Windows or Mac computer to do those conversions. So they don't have to, it's not dependent upon Amaris. And then we also have, uh, we've, we've also taken uh, great strides and tons of effort by our development team um, to make sure that we are converting those files as fast as possible and that we're doing lossless compression to make those files small as well. So what you'll often see is that um, the file, actually almost always see, that the files are much smaller than that raw file format. So, in, um, so it's not uh, completely duplicating in that size. So yes, so we are doing that um, and, and converting these into Amaris files. So how, how do you do it? So for this file right here, which um, Teresa Vanello, uh, who was in Mark Piper's lab at the time, uh, uh, graciously offered to us to use as a demo file, um, this is an LSM file. And so if to convert it, all I have to do is double click on it. And what you'll see um, the first time you do this is that it tells us that Amaris only loads Amaris file formats. And we would, would we like to convert it? Yes. I'm going to go ahead and check this so that the next time I do it, conversions will happen automatically and we don't see this message. So I'll hit OK. And now what we see is uh, over here in the bottom right hand corner, we have a place where different queues for different processes that are happening, they sit here and we have one tab for file conversions. And this file it's, um, has already been converted and it's succeeded. And so now you see um, that it is an IMS file. I do want to mention very quickly that if you, um, if for whatever reason you don't need this file as an Amaris file anymore, you can always right click and revert to original image. And so that will delete your Amaris file, but it will leave that LSM file um, in the background. Okay. So for these, for, um, for individual files, super easy, just double click on them. You can do many different file conversions at once and, and go from there. Um, but what do you do if you have something like a LIF file or another file where one file actually contains multiple images? So what you're seeing is that we, um, we have made it such that all of the files that are contained within that one image have a bar. And so you can see that um, because the bar is the same color and it goes across the top of all of these thumbnails, they're all coming from one single LIF file. And I can then um, select these and convert those to a native file, a native Amaris file format. So again, I selected them, um, used the right mouse button, and now um, have this new menu that shows up and I can click on that. And now all of these are getting added to the list to be converted. And so that'll take a little bit of time as it's chugging through each one of those. And um, so we'll that they're already done. We've seen them that they've popped up. Uh, actually, one more left. Yeah. Okay. And you can see the progress over here. So that's the second type of file that you would be um, converting to be able to convert it into an Amaris file to then be able to take it into Amaris and, um, and, and visualize it. The next type is um, a TIFF stack. So although um, plenty of people are, are, are using microscopy file formats that may put every, uh, all of the slices um, into, into one file. There's still plenty of people out there for whatever reason, um, different systems or different analysis before they get to Amaris or processing before Amaris, they have a TIFF stack. And what's really cool about Arena is that it actually shows this TIFF stack as just one um, just as one thumbnail. And so another cool thing about Arena is that you can right click on any image or folder and you can show an Explorer. So this is within Windows Explorer. It also works for uh, Finder in Mac. Yeah. Um, and what you're seeing now is that within Explorer, we have this whole list 
of, of all of those HeLa cell um, TIFFs, but within ARENA, it's just represented as this one thumbnail. So that's, that's awesome. It's less cluttered. It's much, much easier to visualize. And then again, you can double click on this file. Um, you can double, yes, you can double click on this file and convert it into an Amaris file. You can also, if you need to configure that file series, you can right click and choose that option. And that will let you, um, that will let you um, go in and actually specify exactly um, how you want it to be configured and how you want that final um, Amaris stack to be made. Okay, so I'll get that converted. Okay, so now we have these files that have been uh, converted into Amaris files and we can open them up. I'm gonna do that with one of these Embryo files and then I'm gonna move over to um, another image that I just love a little bit more than this one. So um, once you're ready to open a file, you just double click on it. So we see this nice uh, Siona embryo with certain um, cells that are in green, other nuclei are in blue, and then there's a red labeling in the background as well. Okay, so we did that. I have a habit of immediately rotating the image. I didn't mean to do that. So, um, but for now, you got you should know at this point how to take images and um, and convert them within the arena view so that you can open them with the, um, within Amaris and, and visualize them within Surpass. Um, you should also know at this point how to observe folders. And one other thing that I wanted to mention about observing folders is that there is a drop down menu here, which means that this could be you can set it you can set up the situation so that this is one set of images that i want to look at and i can click on this little icon for a wrench and a screwdriver to allow myself to have another list so it could be my 2020 images let's say and so now that is available in the drop down I can go there and then go and observe different folders if I wanted to. So it could be this folder right here. And I just see this folder. So this could be for different people. Um, it could be for different experiments. Um, and then also if you, uh, yeah. So there, there is a way to organize it here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to go back to my demo images. Um, okay, so right now um, with demo images, uh, what I want to show you is um, I want to just open up an image and take us over into Surpass so that we can um, learn a little bit about how Amaris is set up over there. And then I'm going to finish up um, by talking about File Converter a little bit more and just show you what it looks like. But first, we're gonna we're gonna double we're gonna double click on this image, and um, sh I'll show you some things within um, that surpass view. So again, if I double click, it'll open up this image. This particular image is a demo image that came from Denise Montel's lab, I believe, um, and and not only do we have the image, but we've done some analysis on it as well. And um, and so you're seeing those objects. And actually, for the for this purpose, I want to show you a little trick so that you can open up an image without all of those objects there. So I'm going to go back to Arena, and I'm going to right click, and it says Open Image with Surpass Objects, and that's the default. So that's what happens when I double click on it. But instead, I want to open just the image, only the image. And so now when I do that, we don't have all of those objects overlaid on top of the image. We're just seeing that raw image. And so again, this is a demo image. It's um, It's been cropped and it's been uh, resampled to be small so it can be on our, um, so it can be within our installer. But yeah, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful image of a Drosophila egg chamber. So what I want to do now is to introduce everyone to what they're seeing. I'm just moving that go to webinar box out of the way. 
within the surpass view. So you see this big surpass button right here, and we are within the 3D view. So now what we're, what we're seeing within this 3D view window right here with the image, those things are found listed over here within our scene list. So we have our volume, that is another word for saying your image. <laughs> so you can check that on and off and get rid of it if you need to. Some people love a frame, other, people's, other people hate it. So you can also check that on and off. If you want to see details about the frame or different um, options for it, you can select it and all of that stuff is down here. I'm not gonna go through it. Um, you guys can go in and turn things on and off and see what that does. Um, but there's, there's lots of uh, cool things that you can do with that. So, um, so again, everything that you're seeing within your window, your big 3D view window, you are controlling over here within the scene list. Anna and the rest of the team, when they do their webinars, they're going to go through what these buttons up here are and what they do and why they're useful. Um, but for now, I'm going to I'm keeping it simple um, and just doing this introduction. So hopefully it's not too much of a tease for everyone. Um, I will get back to this display adjustment window. I just kind of move it out of the way for the second for a second. If we go from this left side all the way to the right side, what we're looking at um, is our camera and label toolbar. So again, this is by default on the right hand side all the time. And by default, you start up in navigate mode. You also have a select mode and you can um, change between navigate and select by using the escape button. And that's um, the most useful. <laughs> this is, escape is the most useful uh, uh, keyboard shortcut for everyone to know. So if you're not using that already, um, get to know that you'll find yourself with your left hand hovering over the escape button as you play with Morris and work with Morris. So if I go back to navigate now, then to interact with your uh, image with the left mouse button, you can click and hold and rotate. With uh, the right mouse button, you can click and hold and pan. And then with the scroll wheel on your mouse, because we do recommend that you have a three button mouse when working with Amaris, you can zoom in and zoom out. Okay, one thing that I find a ton of people do in the early days with Amaris is that when they rotate, they spin the image. And the reason they're doing that is because before they stop the mouse, they've let go of the button. Um, and that can cause um, some, some disruption to your use. So just make sure that you stop moving the mouse before you let go of the, um, the button and then it won't spin on you. Okay, another default that we have is that right now we are viewing the data set in perspective mode. So as I zoom out, what you can hopefully see is that things that are closer to us, and so the frame in this case, and um, I can rotate it like this, um, the, those uh, cells that are at the anterior tip, um, all of those things are bigger than the stuff that's uh, farther away uh, because it's in perspective mode. Now, I personally like perspective best, others don't, and that's fine. It's totally a personal preference. There's all, but there's also sometimes when you're doing certain movies where you're using an ortho slicer that you would want to switch to orthogonal mode. And so that is available. And when you switch to that and you can see it with the frame, the frame that's in front is the exact same size as the frame that's in back. And so that's the idea with the orthogonal that um, things that are closer are not any bigger than, than the things that are uh, farther away. Okay, I'm going to go back to perspective because again, that's the one I love. Um, and that for now is, um, is the overview that I wanted to give you for this 3D view. Pretty simple. You need to know about switching between navigate and select. You need to know how to rotate, how to zoom in, and how to pan. And just remember if there's something in your image that you don't like, you can uncheck it. Okay. What I haven't talked about so far 
is this display adjustment window. So the next most important um, uh, keyboard shortcut for you to know is Control D or uh, Command D on, um, on Mac. And that allows you to bring up or hide away this display adjustment window. And within this window, what you're seeing is I can click on a channel. So it's on red right now. I could click over to blue and I'm seeing an intensity histogram for this channel within this 3D image. And now I can adjust um, the min and the max and the gamma if I want to. So I can lessen that max so the blue isn't so saturated. I can increase Um, I could decrease the max here, and um, so it's it, it, the red is more saturated, and um, and and change the look of my image. I can also go in and uncheck uh, these channels if I want to. Now, in this particular case, I am happy with the channel colors, but you could also say this isn't appropriate for people that have. Um, issues with color blindness and, and uh, we are definitely trying to fix a lot of the images we put out there to be better and so you could say instead of um, instead of red i want to change the color and so what i've done is clicked on the name and it takes me to this new window it's the image properties window and i could go down and make this uh, a pink color instead of red I can then switch over to channel two and say, I don't want you to be this um, sort of royal blue, but instead cyan. And so now I've changed those colors um, once I've pushed OK, and you'll see that reflected in, um, in the image as well. You can also click on advanced, and that's where you can actually see the minimum and the maximum settings for each of the channels. Again, you just click on them to change it, click on that big color bar, and you can see the gamma there. So gamma can be adjusted with the little, with the triangle that's pointing up. Um, you can see the green channel changing now, or you can uh, type in a number down here as well. Another feature that we have, um, and it's not, uh, yeah, Another feature that we have that's useful in some images, maybe not all of them, is the fact that you can really fine tune um, your display adjustments for each of the channels because you can now zoom into this histogram. So I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in and I can then go in and with my left mouse button set that minimum and with my right mouse button set the max. And I can do that at an incredibly fine level um, instead yeah, at an incredibly fine level because I do have this ability to zoom in and to see that entire histogram. Um, OK, so there's that. I am not super happy with what I've just done, so I'm going to reset that back um, and then auto adjust all my channels. And that makes it a little bit prettier. Another thing that you might want to do is to um, is just get it back to where it was in terms of the placement of the image within this uh, screen. And so we do have these buttons down here. You can do reset, which will do that for you. Um, you can also just fit the image within your screen. So that's what I did there. You have a full screen view. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and you also have a navigation window. So if you do have a big image and you're going to be zooming in a lot, this will help you know where you are. And then of course you have, you do see your zoom level here and you have a, um, you have a scale bar in the bottom left-hand corner that's, that is there by default. Um, sorry, I'm looking at a list to make sure I covered all of the things that I wanted to cover. Um, I, I do want to go over one sort of technical thing with you guys as well, which is um, making sure that your image properties have been imported correctly. So you can see those properties within Arena, but you may also want to see them within Amaris and or within the Surpass view, excuse me. And so you can go to um, you can go to edit and then you'll see image properties. It's control I. 
And when you bring that up here, you go to the geometry window and you'll see the voxel sizes. So remember, voxels are just 3D pixels. You see those sizes in X and Y and then in Z, that's like your step size. You see um, the number of, of uh, pixels you have in, uh, yeah, in X and Y or the dim and um, as well as the number of slices that you have. Um, so for the first time importing something, it's a good idea to just go ahead and check and make sure that those are correct. And then you're good to go from there and all of the analysis that you'll do um, is correct and the scale bar is right and all of that. Um, it's especially important when you're importing TIFF files. And, um, and so that's another thing to remember to do. Okay, so then I, um, now I also want to take you in and show you two other views that are pretty basic views within the surpass. So now I've switched over to slice. It's another big button at the top. It allows you with the slider on the left hand side to go up and down through your Z stack. And so you can Again, display adjustment is still here. If you just want to focus on one channel, you can zoom in and you can pan using, again, the scroll wheel and the right hand mouse button. Um, and you can check out uh, your image that way. You can also switch over to section view. And you can, again, zoom in. You can move the crosshairs to be able to move in X and Y and see different X, Z, and Y, Z. Um, uh, planes within that. And we also have an extended view um, ability. So I can stretch those using my right mouse or my left mouse button, excuse me, and then um, move that crosshair again. Okay. So I'm going to go back to 3D view. And um, I'm going to finish up in Amaris by showing you one more technical thing. Um, I am close to finishing up. And so I'm going to go to preferences. So again, um, it's, ah, it's under file. It used to be under edit, but it's probably been a few years and I'm just stuck in that mode. Sorry about that. But it's under file. It's also control P and that's preferences. And right here, you'll see um, on the on this first window or this first listing for system, you're seeing uh, what Amara sees really about your system. So it is seeing um, the graphics card that I have and um, and the some of the information about the drivers that it's um, using and that sort of thing. I typically I don't. Uh, recommend that anyone is going in and using um, too much of this information. But on other pages, you might and so. Um, what I often recommend that people do is that they make sure that this tex texture cache limit is appropriate for their graphics card. And so my, I do know that my graphics card um, is about four gigs and so 4,000 megabytes is appropriate uh, for it. So you want it to, off, most often you want it to match the amount of graphics RAM you have. Um, so double check and make sure that's correct. If um, if you call into support because you have an issue, they'll often want you to double check and make sure that that's, um, that's right. And then the other thing that um, I often want people to double check are the settings that are on calculation. So this is going to be the last thing I talk about. I'll leave some of the other preferences to the uh, for the other webinars and for the rest of, of the team to talk about. But here it is. Um, it is super important to, to double check these things. And so the first one is the number of commands in history. history. Um, right now, Amaris has undo functions, and right now it's set up to remember four steps back. Now, this um, can be a little bit cumbersome for Amaris if, uh, if you have uh, a big data set and it's trying to remember all of the different steps backwards. And so, Oftentimes, if you have a big data set, I uh, bring it down to one or two. If you have smaller data sets, don't worry about it. You don't need to change it. Um, so I'm thinking tens of gigs, hundreds of gigs. Um, I would lower it. 
And then um, in terms of your memory limit, it's automatically set to uh, 50%. I would keep it there unless your support team recommends that you change it for your specific application. But then finally, the last thing are cache file paths. So many of us on our laptops and our workstations, uh, which are most likely stuck back in a lab or a facility. Um, so this is recorded and you can watch it later. <laughs> um, most of us have a system with multiple hard drives and uh, there are still some places within Amaris where if, uh, where you might need to, or Amaris might need to write some data um, into a cache file. And so it's important that you go ahead and change this cache file path from one that goes to a smaller drive, often your C drive, to another drive. And it's just a place where uh, we're not picking that for you. You do need to pick that for yourself. And so I'm going to remove that now and add in a new one. And if you were super observant, you would have noticed that I actually have a folder within my D drive for that. Just um, to keep track of it for testing reasons anyway. But then I, this is all I really wanted to do within preferences. There's a bunch of other stuff in there um, that you can play around with. Display has some things talking about um, the statistics and how those values are represented and scale bars and things like that if you wanna get rid of them. So you can just check those off. But for now, um, this is, is plenty for everyone. Okay, and then any changes you make to preferences, you have to start Amaris up again for them to take effect. So I will do that later. Um, okay, at this point, what I do, I what I want to do is to bring up um, file converter. So this is the file converter. Again, it has. Um, it doesn't require a license. It can be downloaded from our website, from our customer portal, where we have various installers listed. And it does change with each version um, and improvements are made. So pay attention to that. And it's installed when you install Amaris. But you can move that, um, but you can install it on any computer. So using the file converter is super easy. I am, what I wanna do is take these, this HeLa cell stack and and convert it using the file converter so i'm going to drop just that first file in so what you'll see is it's showing me the uh, the address for the input and where it's going to be exported out out to into an amaris file it's in the same folder but you can have it go somewhere else uh, to a different drive perhaps if you want to and and then you can click on settings so this file has uh, tags or labels within it that are telling me that uh, for e that are telling me for each file which part of the image it is and so it's of the the first time point it's the first channel and it's the first um, Z uh, slice but and so because of that because Amaris will just automatically understands it it's able to create this array where it makes sense Oftentimes, um, that's not the case, um, and, and so you are able to go in and adjust these to be able to get the right array. You also are able, if Amaris is reading your stack as, or reading your file series as one stack and it's actually separate images and you don't want them to all be part of one stack, we have an option called F-Split to help with that. And we do have some extra information um, online to help you with F-Split. And uh, if you do have problems, let us know and we'll, we'll help you with that more specifically, but I'm uh, running out of time, so I'm not gonna go into it. Okay, so um, once you have that set up um, for a TIFF stack, and again, if you don't have a tip stack, you're just throwing in a CZI, LIF, um, an Olympus file or an uh, ND2 file from Nikon, then just throw those in. Um, and then once you're ready, you can click start all. So again, you can do tons of images at once. It's a batch converter. Um, and so it's a really useful tool and you can see how fast it is. Yeah. Okay, so I, um, I am done at this point and I am ready to take some questions. So Rebecca, hopefully, 
has some of that going. I need to open up my screen, uh, open up my little widget. Um, and let's see, Rebecca, are you there? Are there questions for me? Okay. If sorry, yeah. yes, there is some questions. Um, I'm just going to read some out, okay? Okay, that's good. Um, so one of the questions that came through was, um, can thumbnail display be turned off? Performance issues with large numbers of images in brackets. Okay, okay. So um, let me go back to Arena. Let me start sharing my screen again. Stop, sorry. Uh, where's the little arrow? There we are. Okay, so um, that is one thing that I forgot to mention. I had written myself a note. So the first time you get started in Arena, you are um, it, you are asking Amaris to observe a folder, and Amaris then needs to go in and create the thumbnails for all of the images within it. And so it does this over the course of uh, a few different uh, passes and to make this as efficient as possible. So it's grabbing uh, the information for the metadata as well as the thumbnails. There isn't a way to turn off that thumbnail generation, but that's a really good note for us to have. And I think our development team is hanging out with us in this webinar today. So that's good for them and me to hear um, so that we can consider making some adjustments to make it easier for those folks that are pointing Amaris to observe a folder or that contains all the images for a facility, let's say, something like that. Um, if because uh, um, in that situation, what I would recommend in the meantime is that you do break down that big folder with tons of images into, um, into folders with less images so that it's not having as hard of a time going through and um, making those thumbnails. So, the, um, so if I were to have observed um, folders that hadn't been observed before on my system, it would have taken a little bit of time for Amaris to check through um, and get that information. And so you would see um, a bar going across the top that looks like a progress bar kind of showing you that it's working. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we have more questions? Yeah, we do. Um, another one has just come through. Um, so it says, in my group, we have problems importing data from Thor Labs to Photon Data. Is there a solution ah. for that? So um, please email me so that we can get the specific information. What we probably will need is a, um, uh, an example file. And then we can look into uh, the specifics on that. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, time for maybe another one. Yeah, one more, and then I'm I do I'm going to show one more slide to just wrap up things. Okay. Can you elaborate on where the F split additional info is? Ah, I'm having yes. a lot of trouble with images being combined inappropriately, and this looks like just what I need. Ah, okay, okay. So if you have, um, let's see. So if you go under preferences, this is where you can actually set it up. So I'm within File Converter and under preferences and you can tell Amaris which delimiter will actually flag that you should uh, split this uh, into a separate uh, Amaris file. So that's where that information is within um, uh, within file converter within Amarius, that's where that is. However, um, I believe we have a tutorial video and Anna would probably know this better than I do about using FSplit. If we don't, then we will fast track to have a tutorial video available. But Rebecca, if you could write down that person's name, then we'll go back and find your email address and I'll email you the specific information. And then for everybody else, make sure that we've got a tutorial video about that um, out uh, as soon as possible. Good okay. question. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I just want to thank a few people. Um, 
uh, for their help with things. So Anna, as usual, is awesome and has helped get this webinar series up and running. Um, she's going to be doing the, uh, the next webinar and then she's doing, uh, I think, the fifth one, the fourth or fifth one about animations and snapshots as well. So stay tuned. She's um, doing a lot of the tutorial videos lately as well, and she does a great job. I also want to thank the marketing team for helping us get this going and to do that quickly. And Rebecca, who is our awesome um, sort of director of everything today on the webinar. So thank you so much for, for being my rock uh, as we get this up and running too. And then if you are interested in checking out additional webinars, you can find that within um, that virtual hub that you can get to from our homepage, amaris.com. And one last thing that I do wanna show everyone is that we will be hosting a virtual meeting, a cell and developmental biology virtual meeting through LabRoots. We'll be announcing it in the next week or so. So if you've gotten the emails about this webinar series, you'll also uh, see this information about this virtual meeting. We've got a couple of um, great uh, keynote speakers. We're, um, and then we're going to have some mini symposia and a poster session as well. So we're really looking forward to it. We think it'll be a great way for people to share um, to share uh, new uh, uh, new results and that sort of thing when it's kind of difficult to do that these days since we don't have as many conferences going on. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for more webinars happening as well. And again, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. I know everyone has got a lot on their plate right now. So again, thank you. And let us know if there's anything else we can do. Take care. Bye-bye.